Our paper offers a preliminary and exploratory assessment of the potential benefits and costs of climate engineering. Specifically, we argue that the Copenhagen Consensus Climate Change Project should allocate about $750 million per year out of its hypothetical $750 billion annual budget for research into climate engineering. Climate engineering is the intentional modification of the Earth's environment to offset climate change. Climate engineering consists of two technology families, air capture and solar radiation management. Air capture removes CO2 from ambient air and sequesters it away from the atmosphere. Solar radiation management technologies, or SRM, seek to increase the amount of sunlight that the Earth reflects back into space. One might consider the use of these technologies in an emergency situation, such as strong and rapid warming, or as a preventative measure to lower the risks of expected warming. As part of the Copenhagen Consensus Project, my co-author and I agreed to quantify the potential direct benefits of solar radiation management. If these potential benefits are large, one might wish to pursue a research program to develop these technologies and understand the potential of negative side effects. We analyzed two classes of SRM technologies, marine cloud whitening and stratospheric aerosol injection. In the case of marine cloud whitening, two researchers, Professor Stephen Salter and John Latham, have suggested the injection of seawater into existing marine clouds. The salt in this seawater would provide additional condensation points, leading to wider and hence more reflective clouds. In the case of stratospheric aerosol injection, a precursor of sulfur dioxide would be injected into the stratosphere. The sulfur dioxide droplets would scatter sunlight, reflecting some back into space. Scientists know that this approach can reduce temperatures because this has been observed after volcanic eruptions which inject aerosols into the stratosphere. The levels of aerosol injection that we consider in our paper are on the order of 1 to 3 percent of the amount of sulfur that is currently injected into the atmosphere through human activities, such as the burning of fossil fuels. Clearly, these technologies involve risk, as does climate change itself. One possible side effect of aerosol injection that has been mentioned is a changing in precipitation patterns. It is for this reason that our paper argues for research rather than deployment. However, one must be careful to keep the correct comparison in mind when thinking of climate engineering. The choice is not between climate engineering and no climate change. Rather, the choice is between climate engineering and the world that will prevail without climate engineering. In sum, we estimate that the direct benefit-cost ratios of SRM are large yet significant uncertainties remain about the science and engineering of actually deploying it. Only a substantial research program can resolve these uncertainties, but the very large potential net benefits of SRM offer strong evidence for including it in any development of future greenhouse gas policies. As part of our research, we also investigated the economic impact of air capture. As a reminder, Air capture removes CO2 from ambient air and sequesters it away from the atmosphere. In our paper, we contrasted air capture with SRM to understand how much of one would equal the economic benefit of the other. Because of lags in the climate system, the effects of air capture take a longer time to be realized than does SRM. We estimate that removing and sequestering five and a half gigatons of carbon every year has the same economic benefit as SRM1, which is a reduction in radiative forcing of one watt per square meter. To place this number in perspective, we note that humanity introduces 8.5 gigatons of carbon into the atmosphere every year. Thus, five and a half gigatons is approximately 65% of global annual CO2 emissions. In other words, considering only the impact on temperature, capturing and sequestering 65% of CO2 emissions has the same economic benefit as reducing the solar flux by 0.3%. In addition to this performance in terms of benefits, air capture costs are also currently estimated to be relatively high. 
for example. It's been estimated that the cost to remove a single part per million of CO2 from the atmosphere using air capture technologies is on the order of $1 trillion. These differences between air capture and solar radiation management suggest that these technologies will play very different roles.